I appreciate bringing to the forefront. I think there's um, something else that I, that I saw with you um, years ago as we got a chance to talk more about uh, something else that you guys have done, and, and I think in the military that I think is just maybe the tip of the iceberg in the in the rehab or in the performance training community. We played with some stuff at Exos on the mental side and and mental preparation and, and uh, predicting environments and these types of things. But I know you guys had an amazing uh, virtual reality lab that you utilized. And I think that this brings up always this idea for me as far as when athletes are ready to return to sport or people are ready to return to activity and, and how we push them. And we know this concept of sensory integration is huge. So obviously with BFR is great in the initial stages to build up muscle tissue and make sure that the musculoskeletal system is there. But then when we go to return to sport, we've got to be able to have this this firing, these synapses firing, have it be sharp and have them have the systemic integration of sensory from smell to taste to um, uh, to predicting pain or feeling pain or nervousness of going back onto a field where they've been hurt before and those types of things. So I'm super interested in this concept of virtual reality and how helping a, a, a client or an athlete experience the environment that they might actually participate or play in prior to getting to it. I, I know with you working with the special ops guys, that's obviously critically important. When we're working with a football guy, if we put a guy back on the field and he's not quite ready to go, he might do a play or two and be like, yeah, you know what, I'm it's not good, I'm out. But you're working with a special ops team and you send a SEAL team out and there's eight guys on the squad and if one of them can't go, the whole team's at serious life-threatening risk. Right. So that return to sport for that group's a different animal. So I know you guys used it a little bit in that environment, I think. Yeah, we did, you know, because like you said, it's life or death. So we, we call it RTD, so it's a return to duty package. Um, and, and it's, you know, I'm actually writing, a, I'm in charge of a book chapter, an orthopedic book on return to play with, with some other folks right now. So we're trying to whittle it out. And, and, and I think you guys understand it as well. We really don't know the best criteria for return to play. And then a lot of times it's like, cool, they passed their jump test. Now get on back out there. And, and how could that ever recreate what this person's going to have to do either on the battlefield or on, on the soccer field? So yeah, we have amazing tools at our center um, we have we have a we had a couple of, of virtual reality things that were valuable and one was a, a shooting um, lab and so it, this was just a large room with basically a, a virtual kind of world on the walls and so you had different things like a boulder they had to get down under versus um, you know a, a door with a glass that was busted out could they get behind that and get up and get down and one of our special forces um, former patients ran the lab and, and that was more watching and just putting them in that sensory environment. And he's doing timing and videotaping and showing us, hey, this guy, you know, he got down and it took him a second and a half to get up off the ground. Well, that could be life or death. So then he took that back to therapy and would say, you know, even though we might have tested that when he's got a gun and another guy shooting at him, he's given us like he needs to work on this. And then so we would take him out in environments and try and really stimulate him and see if we could we could better that. Then our, our other part was 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 called the Karen system, C-A-R-E-N. And so when the wars started, we didn't have the center for the intrepid. We ramped it up really quickly. And it was it's an amazing story the, the center was was built off of donations from the American public and, and what was called the Intrepid Fallen Heroes Fund, the Mr. Fisher. Um, not a single tax dollar went to that. And it's just it's just amazing place. It's the Disney world of rehab. Um, but we were still trying to understand war and, and we sent a contingent over to Israel because they're always in war. <laughs> and so they, you know, to see kind of what they were doing to maintain force readiness and, and this, they were using these Karen systems and, and, and telling us, you know, it was valuable. And so the Karen is this giant dome. Um, so it, it looks like Epcot or something at Disney World when you go in and, and you go into it and there's a, a treadmill that's on a platform and you get on the treadmill and it, and it kind of floats out into the middle. It's on, a, it's on a little steel pole and it floats you out into the middle of that dome. And then you can recreate whatever world you want. You know, if you want Syria, our programmers can build Syria. And, you know, we have all this, you know, I can't really go there, but there's ways they can recreate these worlds. And, and the treadmill not only moves, but if you're running up a hill, it'll go up a hill. If an IED goes off, it shakes and tries to recreate the, you know, the shaking of the IED. Um, there's, you, you can have your comrades on the side. They even have a setup now where you can have, we have virtual and other bases where they can be there with their buddies and they're wearing their, their, their goggles and seeing that their buddies are there while they're rehabbing in that system. I mean, at its highest level, if we're really trying to stimulate, we can put out the smell of burning flesh you know, and having that, you know, the over, over sensory type of things. That one, it's a full biomechanical system. 
So it's not a, okay, this is what I'm seeing, although we watch them to see it, but we get, you know, force plate data, we get biomechanics data, and, and they would come back with this just list. The problem early on was just information overload. We're just like, holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm not really sure what I can do about this or whatever. So we had to really, and I think anyone that moves into this space, try and figure out if you're getting that laser type of data, what really is important. But you know, there were some some fascinating things at times. I remember one story, of one of our SF guys, he was, you know, if you see the guys moving through a street and they're in a group, you notice how they're all kind of pointing in a certain direction. They have to cover their quadrant. So you don't want your guy on your left, if he hears a noise to spin around and try and shoot that way, because he's going to shoot you in the head. You got to <laughs> trust your buddy next to you is covering that backside for you. And so this one guy kept missing some targets on his right. And he was just like a post-op ACL. Um, he didn't even really recognize he did it, but it wasn't really meeting this threshold when he was doing it when he was on his left side. And it was basically, he just was having a trouble with that internal rotation on, on his right leg. And so, you know, the biomechanics data tees it out. He's not rotating just enough. So he might've missed that guy at his 90 degree angle. And it was basically go back to rehab, work on getting that internal rotation back. Let's recheck you. Once we check you off, your return to duty game ready. Now we're okay sending you back to your unit and saying you got the CFI blessing. So from that kind of standpoint, I would have never picked that up. That That's huge and, and maybe it's life saving. And, and that's the recreation that I think this technology is hopefully gonna be able to get us to, even with, you know, if my young daughter has an ACL from soccer that she could do some sort of VR test to get game ready. Next level, that's amazing. Yeah, I, I really think there's a lot to that. I mean, obviously that 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 proves it, but there there's so much as we all know. You know, I always tell our therapists like to go and, and do something in the clinic versus what's really game speed is such a big difference in those two things. And you know, if you ever watch someone on virtual reality, they put the goggles on and you know they're moving all around, they're reacting to the visual stimulus, right? So their body has mm -hmm. these these reactions, and those are, those reactions are really what we're after. And often right. in the clinic, you're not going to get those natural reactions. You're going to get a a very you know, predictable kind of, it's a safe environment. I'm doing it this way. And even if you're doing some reactive agility, it's still mild in comparison to what's really coming on when there's a ball flying at you. I mean, just think about football, for example, you're working with a wide receiver, ACL, let's run, let's jump, let's cut. Okay. Now let's throw a ball. It's a little bit behind you. You got to reach outside your base support over here and you're going to get hit from the far side. This way you're going to get hit from this side. Now your body's position has never been in since the injury and you might just curl up in a ball and fall and Maybe you save your ACL, but you're probably getting cut from the team because you're ineffective, you know? So did yeah. we really return you back to sport or did we just get you good enough to, to try to play? And I, I think that's a really reasonable, that's for me, that's a big passion is how do we get people really back to, to a level? It's a double-edged sword. You can, a controlled clinical environment is never going to recreate that environment. And then we are in a liability kind of issue. Yeah. You guys are. Right. I wasn't. Yeah. But yeah, your goal is not like, let me do something that can hurt you to see if you pass that test. Because if they get hurt, you're like, well, shit, okay, now <laughs> yeah. I'm in There we go. Didn't work. Um, <laughs> our, at our place, you know, our, our orthopedic trauma director, he said, if you break them, I'll fix them. So we were, you know, our goal was to put them to the limit because they wanted to redeploy. Um, I think I would be really nervous, you know. And, and so I think with AI, we would have to, look at is there a different consent almost like okay this is game game ready and you're going to be put under some stressors that you might not be ready for but you're going to be out in a field where they want to hurt you so yeah you know, we got to test this somehow yeah i think it's really cool i think i'm sure we'll see more and more down the path of of that technology uh because it, it's really not it's not that expensive you know a couple hundred bucks for a oculus unit or whatever it is now and then a, a little bit of programming around it, I could see that being the next phase that we'll, we'll see more and more of. So I think you're absolutely yeah, the right. Technology is moving fast. So I think we're going to have to be ready and be caught up and we're going to have to dictate what we want from it is going to be the key. Exactly. When, when and how much can we use it?